I can hear my grandmother. My grandmother was a tiny East Indian Jamaican woman. She couldn't have been more than four feet, three inches, if that. Such a sweet little Indian dolly. When I bent down to hug her, I felt like Shrek. <laughs> See? Because that's how small she was. But if my grandmother got hold of your hand when she was telling you a story, you couldn't move until she wanted you to because the pressure she would put on your hand would make you feel like you were launched into a cage match that you weren't prepared for. <laughs> that is how strong she was. I can hear my grandmother say, Chrissy, what is for you? Kya, un for you. And that means if it belongs to you, it is already yours. And if it doesn't, it wasn't meant for you in the first place. You can say it, I know you're all nervous about it. You can say it if you want, you can try, but that phrase has stuck out in my mind and guided me through every important decision that I have had to make. You see, I grew up in Kingston, Jamaica, in a family that thought success looked like one of these three things. Doctor, lawyer, or accountant. <laughs> my mother studied accounting. She's an amazing numbers person. My father has a photographic memory, so does my sister. I do not have these skills. But I did accounting, because I wanted to please my parents. So I studied it in high school. I studied it post high school. I'm 18 years old. I walk into my parents' bedroom. Um, I don't want to be an accountant. I would like to be an artist. And I, and I say artist like it's been some dirty little secret I've been keeping from them, which I think, I, I guess I have, because they have no idea. They pause the television, they look at me, and they say, that picnia, she mad or what? And I'm like, mad? I am not mad. I will go mad if I keep studying accounting. That is why I need to be an artist. And I don't know which one of them said this, but one of them definitely said this. Christina, only lazy people got to art college. <laughs> I knew I had to do something immediately. So I did what any 18-year-old Jamaican would do. I went and got a job at Federal Express, which is now known as FedEx in Kingston, Jamaica. And they hired me as their junior accountant. <laughs> I was swiftly demoted in three months to customer service agent at the front desk, but this does not matter because I am working, saving up money to put myself to night school, to create a portfolio so I can try and get into this place for lazy people called art college. And that is what I do. I save up, I do my portfolio, I take my exam, and I get into art college, and I hear my grandmother. Chrissy, what is for you? Kya on for you? And I'm in art college, and oh my God, this does not feel like accounting school. I am painting in the morning, I'm sculpting in the afternoon, I'm playing dominoes with my brethren at lunchtime. I'm talking to all these amazing, prof well, not all of them are amazing. Most of my professors are amazing. But I'm learning so much, and I feel like I've found my place, my voice, and my home. Graduation is around the corner. And I'm like, uh-oh. What am I going to do after art college? How am I going to translate all this learning into the world? And so, I hear my grandmother. Chrissy, what is for you? Kya on for you. So with eyes wide open, I go and I graduate, I'm out into the world, and I'm like, all right, what's happening in Jamaica? What are creative people doing? And in the late 1990s, early 2000s, I don't know if you remember this, people were smoke staining, sponging, 
crackling, spackling, and putting murals on everything. So my friend and I from art college started a company, and we did just that. We did every single smoke stain, sponge, whatever we could do. At the same time, I was making my art, and I applied to be in this big show at the National Gallery of Jamaica. And they selected a painting. And then they hung it beside the head of the painting department from my college. That felt so sweet. And my parents were in the gallery, and I overheard them talking to their friends. Um, you see that painting over there? That is my daughter, you know. She's an amazing artist, isn't it lovely? And I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> all right. So during this time, all right, I'm like, I am not going to go back to FedEx, right? I cannot do that. I have to follow my passion. So. I decide to explore and have lots of curiosity, and I end up becoming a prop buyer for movies and commercials and a set decorator. I'm doing radio, I'm doing television, and I'm making my art. I meet my husband, who was a musician, and we fall in love and we get married, and in 2004, he says to me, Chrissy, I'm like, what? We're moving. We're moving? Yes, we're moving. Where are we moving to? Connecticut. Connect who? What? <laughs> what do you mean we're moving to Connecticut? I have visited this place, but what do you mean? He's like, well, daddy's retiring, and I have to help my mother with the business. So I said, yay, we're moving to Connecticut. <laughs> so I moved to Connecticut, and I'm here in Connecticut, and I'm like, Great, I know nobody except my husband and his parents, so that's fabulous. And I don't, have, I don't have a creative outlet. I don't have a space to call my own. I'm like, are there any Jamaicans here? Turns out there's a lot. So I Googled all the Jamaicans on the East Coast doing anything in creativity, and I asked my parents if they knew anybody that knew them that they could hook me up with. And so I ended up in New York interviewing Matis Yahoo with this little show. I was in New Rochelle on the radio. I'm in Hartford doing this little reggae show. And I'm hustling because my hustle is art. That's where I belong. And while I'm doing all of this, I see a, com a commercial, I add in the paper, for this musician. His name is Magic Malik. He's a flautist from France, and he has like this cool afro, he's black. I'm like, a black flautist from France? I've got to check this out. So we go, and I walk into the art center, and the minute I walk into this place that Magic Malik is performing, I'm like, wait a minute. This feels right. I think I've found my spot. I have to figure out how to stay in this place. And as I'm listening to Magic Malik perform, a song he plays sounds so familiar. And it's not like Gordon and I were listening to like flautist music in Jamaica every day. But I'm like, Gordon, doesn't that song sound familiar? And he goes, yeah. It's a song we heard three months on a beach in Port Antonio, Jamaica, before we moved to Connecticut. How the hell am I in Hartford watching an artist that I could never imagine being in front of that I just heard on somebody's CD in Jamaica? And if that wasn't enough, there was a job opening for a visual arts coordinator. Now, I've never been called a visual arts coordinator, but one could say that I've been coordinating visual arts for some time. <laughs> so I applied. And I got the job. And for five and a half years, I learn and I do the best work of my life. I'm working with artists that I only read about in art college in Jamaica. Literally, artists from Art Forum are now mentoring me. I'm learning about my curatorial practice. I'm learning about public art. I am just growing like a sponge, and I feel like I'm in my best place. Five and a half years into that position, they eliminate my job. I was the director of visual arts, and they eliminate it because of budget cuts. So I'm home in Windsor, Connecticut, with my infant daughter. And I'm like, now what? And I hear my grandmother. Chrissy, what is for you? Can't 
on for you. So again, with eyes wide open, I'm like, all right, I am not getting a job at FedEx. I need to stay in the arts. What's happening? What's happening in Boston? What's happening in New York? What's happening? There's a job open in Boston for a curator. This is what I've been doing. I apply. They call me in. I sit in the interview. It goes really well. The executive director says to me, we're not going to give you the, well, I'll try to, we're not going to give you the curator job, but we'd like you to be our director of programs. And I'm like, so a promotion before I even start. Sign me up. Thank you so much. See you in the morning. <laughs> and I commute 103 miles each way from Windsor, Connecticut to Boston. And that job prepared me to return home to Hartford. Because my new boss ran the art center that I worked at like a little municipality. Because she used to be the cultural affairs director of Queens, in New city of Queens in New York. And she helped me start think about art and community development, art and small business and economic development, all of this work that we were doing, how do I translate it to the real world in a much more meaningful and broad way? And she says to me, you know, Christina, I think you should think about working for a municipality. And I'm like, working for a municipality? <laughs> Look, I am the anti-man. I am not the man. And she's like, well, I think you'd really thrive. And I'm like, whatever, lady. So <laughs> if you've ever commuted 100 miles each way to work, you know this is not sustainable. So one year, one month later, I'm at a Chamber of Commerce meeting in Hartford, Connecticut. And my name badge says, Christina Newman Scott, Director, Marketing Events, Cultural Affairs, City of Hartford. I'm in my kitten heels, my black pantyhose, and my business suit. I'm all like, you know, looking all professional and government-like. And <laughs> I actually did thrive working for the city. I actually, I worked with economic development to incubate small business uh, with a focus on people who are doing like uh, creative work to revitalize our downtown. I worked with our police department on safety. I worked with DPW and the fire department on artists that were doing interactive water murals. I worked with Parks and Recreation to think about how to support young filmmakers and move a film program throughout the city. I was really learning about how I could systematically integrate this work into city government. And that was thrilling. I couldn't believe it. I essentially got to curate my city. So while you might still see me from time to time, wearing black pantyhose, kitten heels, and like a little government business suit, I'm an artist, and I'm a curator. And my title is now Director of Culture for the State of Connecticut because what is for you can't unfeel.